I digress, because the game is going to begin. But yeah, this... I'm curious to see how this, if this is going to work, because Lowry and Orphelius... Like, Orphelius, they're a good player. They have their skill. I think Lowry is uh, more all-around. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lowry is definitely has more stronger. skills all-around. Uh, Orphelius is... Isn't uh, that experienced in, in all aspects of Zero K yet? But he's getting there. Yeah, I've. I think uh, in longer games, uh, Lori definitely has an advantage. Well, that's always uh, the case. With, in the early game, it can player. go either way still, and this is a small map, so this game can go either way. It also has its very own dynamics with the reclaim. Metal and energy income are completely, are totally different from uh, your regular game. Oh yeah, that's I gotta show this because this is the map. As you can see, viewers, there are a lot of trees. And as you may not so easily see, there are a lot of rocks. You can actually get away with building half a dozen workers and nothing else for the first five minutes of the game, and your economy mets are economy needs are met. And then when you're ready, you can just build metal extractors, because why not? But up until that point, you can support everything off reclaim. That's what this map does. It is a very different map. Yeah, you can um, eat the trees in a, a matter of speaking for energy, uh, and you can I eat had. the rocks from metal. Unfortunately, there's no worker I can select to really show off the reclaim yet until the game starts. I'm getting pain. But this is a typical rush map. Um, you can see a lot of cool early game strategies. Oh yeah, well we've seen shield bot from Orphelius, that's normal. Lowry going for shield bot as well? Fairly normal. Wow. Probably dirt it's gonna be dirt bag. Dirt bag spam all the way. I'll be surprised anything else. Okay, now I can show you how much reclaim there is. Oh, bandit spam. Okay, so on this map, there is a grand total of 2475 metal and 17,225 energy. For reference, given that commanders have 10 build power, most workers have five. That means that a commander reclaiming the entire map would have approximately I think 40 minutes worth of just doing whatever. Because it's 10 build power per second, and then that gives you 240 seconds. Sorry, that's But uh, everything we're saying now, both of these players are disregarding, because none of them nope. are making any constructors. Despite Lowry the wants there's to be safe with three bandits. He uses them only for defense. He doesn't scout. And our field is going uh, for dirt bags. Mm -hmm. And a couple bandits. Lori now starts up with two constructors. He does add a lotus and moves away with his uh, bandits. Yeah, they're. I think he wanted to, to wait for a lotus in his base before he moved out with his bandits. Definitely a good idea. Know. But at the same time, if his opponent w would have done the same, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, but at the same time, there's going to be a roach coming here, roach. so his is going to have a hard time getting in. They uh, know. This is not Starcraft Actually, roach. This is more like a baneling in Starcraft. <laughs> yeah, it's. It explodes, except for, unlike a Baneling, it dies extremely quickly when shot at. Like, if yeah. it is spotted along the way, it will die, it will explode, and it will do pretty much nothing to them. It might destroy your own army, because it's right there. Because that's how 0k rolls. There's one thing to point you out about 0k. You might want to, uh, show uh, the blast radius of a roach. Oh yeah, I think I can... Can I do that as a space Just hover shift, and then... Uh... Oh, there we go. Yeah, the yellow circle there. That's what it does when it explodes. I think blue circle is max damage, too. And the red circle is uh, the fall-off area. Yeah, so that's the thing. Roaches have a huge blast radius. And also, one thing to point out for anyone not familiar with 0k, friendly fire is unfriendly. But does exist. It's actually one important we, thing uh, to point out. It comes up. Indeed. Especially <laughs> but, with ducks. Uh, uh, look at, uh, at Lori. He had one constructor and one commander. One taking the top, the other taking the bottom. Um, Orphelius doesn't do anything of the sorts. He uh, used, wanted to use his roach for defense. He expected an attack of bandits because he saw four of them attacking. Yeah, and and Lowry uh, read that perfectly. He didn't uh, invest anything in uh, better income, in economy. Yeah, Lowry is doing the perfect he read on this. Even more of this commander, exactly um, it's a quite what nasty combat commander now with a machine gun and uh, auto repair. Yeah, I've noticed that... But he's, he's on a clock now. He needs to make something happen with that investment in his commander and that investment in that outlaw. Otherwise, he will just be outproduced. 
Yeah, because at this point, Lowry, Lowry will not make the mistake of not adding build power. And Lowry has done everything right so far. They've approached when they should, they've retreated when they should, they've put pressure where they should, and they've expanded when they should. Or Felix, on the other hand, they're trying to force opportunities that Lowry yeah, it's is just taking. It's, it's a dangerous attack that's happening oh. right now. Yeah, Lowry lost a bandit for free. That was a bit of a mistake. Uh, I was not, uh, referring that to that commander though. in the center. That's a nasty thing you see, you're seeing there. A shield bot with the, the, the thug. Oh, Outlaw yeah. to slow down and the auto repaired commander. That's uh, dangerous. You cannot stop it if it would uh, move uh, forward now. You need something like either a uh, racketeer or um, like that, a um, felon. felon. Felon actually is a bit risky, actually, because felons. Okay, it's a recon comp, so not the biggest deal. But because felons do depend on their shield so much for the damage, heavy units are great. Yes, to fight felons. without this commander now. This is uh, really a. Uh, yeah, Orphelius just wants oh, to go all yes, in, and good. down goes that thug. That's the roach explosion. That's what we were talking about. Down goes the thug. The outlaw's still up. No shields, though. Orphelius might have a shield on the level two. If it gets yes, that far... Yes, is usually the best defense against if this. If it gets uh, that far. I don't think it's going to get that far. I think Orphelius', is, Orphelius is commander has five seconds to live. Gets out of the way, no, though. That's auto still. repair. So, oh, here's the felon. Does he has one auto shield. Changed. Two shield bots. Auto repair takes ten seconds to activate. Yeah, and it's, it's good, otherwise these type of pushes would just win the game straight away, straight up. As they used to, but now they don't. However, it has been almost 10 seconds now, it will... Yeah. It should this is what we call just-in-time defense. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, just got, also just kicked in for the morph. The Orphelius adding a personal cloak and two auto repair systems, we'll see them kick in soon enough. Or not! No, no that that was... Oh boy, that's one way of suiciding. <laughs> just, just jumped. Literally jumped to its death. <laughs> jumped into it. And it died in midair I too. Don't even. And we see the... Uh, yeah, the I saw fist. that, yeah. I saw it just fall over. That really didn't need to happen at all. That, re that was totally yeah. unnecessary. So yeah, Orphelius just throws the commander Orphelius away and with the game one. Okay, well, Orphelius is going to get mad for me laughing at him, so sorry, Orphelius. I, I don't mean to laugh at you. I mean to laugh at the fact that your commander, the way your commander died was hilarious. Because 0k is like that. When you... Things die in hilarious ways all the time. <laughs> so I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing at your hapless units. Anyway, looks like Kaleo is going to be the next map. Another small map. That's actually the final first map. Oh, oh wait, is this? Yeah, it's going to be Kaleo 2. Anyway, but uh, you have to update oh. me on the tournament format. Is it best of 3 or best of 5? It is best of 3 until finals. Also, Sprung pointing out that the blue circle on the roach is the decloak radius at which it starts to reveal itself. Because that's also, for those unfamiliar, the way cloaking works in 0k, units remain cloaked until they fire, except for a couple cases. I think there's like only one or two cases that's the case. Sharpshooters and the Cloak of Factory being a notable case. And if they are have any enemy units near them, they automatically decloak. So all units effectively detect by proximity. Which means <laughs> that anything that has cloaking is either by, bur by being buried or having a cloaking device. It is going to be decloaked whenever something's near it. And stuff that buries to cloak decloaks moving, as well as when firing. So here we are, another small map. Yeah, another small, in this case, extremely dark map. Because... Yeah, that's what, what was I about... I wanted to say, you can really see the diversity of spring maps. <laughs> if you put these three maps of the past three games uh, next together, they're yeah. so completely different. All have their completely different own uh, playstyle. Other strategies, it's, it's uncomparable. And Lowry going for Cloakybot Factory, no surprises at all. Orphelius, probably going to go Cloakybot as well. Kaleo is a very cloaky heavy map. And if you're wondering, it's also designed for four players or four teams. Uh, the way that works, for those of you unfamiliar, as many of you might be, the way that Spring works is a little bit unusual. It's, it's very much like Planetary Annihilation, actually. I noticed they have used the same system, where every time you start it, you have various points you can start it. You choose within that box, unlike Planetary Annihilation, you don't choose a point from a set. You have a set of point. you have a box you can choose from. You choose anywhere in that box, and that's where you start. But not just you, anyone on your team 
So if you're playing in a team of, if it was a team of six here, they'd all have to choose the starting point somewhere in here. And yes, that is actually a thing that can happen. It goes 10 by 10 versus 10s are fairly frequent. But usually in 10v10, you have bigger start boxes. Unless you're playing Icy Run, as everyone seems to want to do. <laughs> no, that's just a troll map. Yeah, it really is. Anyway, Icy Run aside, since we're not going to see that most likely. Orphelius has not chosen their factory yet, but yeah, this is a clicky bot setup. Players have. Well, Lowry's set up. I'm not sure what Orphelius is waiting for. They've connected, I think. Oh, they're just really confused. Well, safe bet is cloaky. As a general rule, safe bet is cloaky, but they go for shields. Not a bad bet either. Your feelings goes yeah, the good thing about cloaks is they have a very cheap uh, unit that is fairly powerful. Uh, and uh, you can get a lot of get a lot out from uh, if you micro a lot, and this is a low income map, so with few units you're best off with a lot of micro. Mm -hmm. With the same goes for bandits, by the way. Yeah, although bandits do benefit a bit from the fact that they are, in fact, a tiny bit tougher. A tiny bit stronger. Just by the lack of auto repair. But uh, Orphelis isn't doing anything. Is his ping okay? Oh, uh, he's lagging out. Oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, he had a lag spike of four seconds. Uh, that sucks. Although I know Orphelis was actually a little bit confused as to what to do in the first place. I'm mentioning in, ch in the game chat. Regardless, that was an unfortunate spike because, as I mentioned earlier on, the early game, the very first few seconds are extremely important, and getting your stuff out quickly is absolutely necessary when fighting against a good player. Especially someone of Lowry's caliber. You do not want so to be wasting quite any time. quite funny chose the defender instead of the Lotus as his first uh, defense. I think that's a good idea. I think when you're no, doing... I prefer Lotus as... Uh, really? Even on Kaleo? When you know your opponent's going to go for glaives? Yeah, because two glaives still can run by and uh, That's true, get those yeah. metal extractors. You, you shouldn't feel safe with one uh, defender well, like this. Two defenders, you should have uh, yes. one of your own raiders or your commander still close. Also, so that defender is effectively doing nothing. Lowry, An Lowry doing Anarchid's game of the Gremlin. I'm quite glad to see this more often. I hope that Orphelius catches on and goes for counter scouting. Because I haven't seen anyone other than me actually go for scout for cloak screening, trying to figure out where those gremlins are. Okay, yeah, you should always a do this against cloak players. Hmm? Or you you should be familiar with it if you play uh, against uh, spiders. Yeah, that too. No, against, you, you should always have uh, when you play spiders. You expect fleas to be everywhere, so you should scan for them a lot. Yeah, but against Cloaky Bots, Gremlins are going to be there. They're going to be in your base. They're going to be same watching thing. you. The only thing is they cost 150 metal instead of two. <laughs> but at the same time, they are they are harder to see. They have a higher, they're much, much, much higher vision radius. You can stick them in safe but spots. But look, uh, Orphelis is, doing, uh, is putting all his resources into this attack with Dirtbags and Bandits. Which is not surprising. Orphelius know, knows they basically have to go for the all-ins and win the all-ins. That's a bit of the risk of this Gremlin choice. The gremlins are taking money oh, away from Glaze. You can see uh, how Lori uh, sees the attack coming and puts his con uh, constructor on high priority to finish that. Yeah, that's Lotus a time. great idea. But the dirtbags, on the other hand, are going uh, to be distracting. The micros, uh, does he micro his turret? No. Oh, well, actually. Maybe. No, he's not setting targets on the on the oh. bandits. Oh, well, it doesn't seem to matter, though. The dirtbags are able to get... Uh, they aren't even being hit. The bandits are taking priority. Still, that Lotus does go down, and with yeah, that, but it was a good trade. I think he got the better end of it. And he that, that Conjure's able to get away uh, alive. Ah, oh shit! He has, still has his factory in low priority, and now all his resources are going to his commander, which is not where he wants it now. Oh yeah, right. Because Lowry does that. That's actually a thing. Advanced tactic. Okay, priority is a system in this game. You can choose how your resources are split. <laughs> for those of you not familiar, for the for the new for the new viewers. Every construction project, including the factories themselves building units, has a priority setting. Normally what happens is your resources are distributed evenly among everything that you have. If you set priority, however, if it's at high priority, it gets it first, and then the remainder are distributed. If it's low priority, everything else gets it first, and then the low priority stuff gets whatever's left. Yeah, it's but a, he's fine now. Yeah, he, it's he a good idea live. in general to put your factory in low priority early on, just so that it's always building as much as it can without getting in the way of other stuff, like your economy. 
but yeah, you got to be careful once you get into the mid to late game. Once you get to plus 20 or higher, where the factory should actually be a higher priority. Because it does become that much more important. You aren't so worried about the early game economy. But despite uh, this failed attack, he... Orphelius does have a bigger income now, and he has a good line of turrets set up in the right corner. Yeah, Orphelius is actually... I like this way of dirtbags. I haven't seen this yet. Are dirtbags used like this? It's, it's quite cool. Yeah, Orphelius is surprisingly pushing a lot of effort into these dirtbags. You know, I, I should point out, there was actually a match I watched against between Orphelius and a newer player whose name I can't remember. It was North Chilean G, I think. Oh, uh, come, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. Right, come on, the battle, come oh, on, the yeah, battle. That was, oh, who's going to win? I think Lowry's going to win. Light Particle Beam. He has a slightly bigger range. And also better accuracy, too. No, but they're in each other's range now. Doesn't matter, though. Lowry is forcing Orphelius to retreat. Orphelius should be able to retreat successfully. The Glaive might be a problem, but not a big mm -hmm. one. Yeah, he needs Vision. But with the Dirt Bags? Ah. At the same time, though, there is an attack coming in here, which Bandits are trying to help with. But at the same time, the Bandits... Not really in large enough numbers. Orphelia's mic growing decently well, though. Well enough to get rid of the glaives. Not that, I mean, bandits have a lower micro requirement than glaives do, but still, working out. And the dirtbags going over to deal with Lowry's Lotuses, Defenders, and it looks like they might actually be able to... Are they going to deal with this? I think they're just going to headbutt everything to death. It's unusual. Uh, I doubt so. Well, yeah, it seems unlikely. But at the same time, Lowry's commander's taking a lot of damage. I mean, look at Lowry's yeah, commander, so. it's... This is... Wow, that's that's a lot. This is going to be the silliest comp... Yeah, this is a comp snipe. This is a bona fide comp snipe. Lowry's commander went down to dirtbags. You've seen it here first, Tom. You saw Shadow it here first on hitbox. You saw it here first. Shout out Fury 3 and Floris, the 14th, giving you the dirtbag comp kill. Ah, uh, but now uh, Lowry uh, fails with micro. And he loses more bandit. Uh, I mean, glaives. Okay, glaives. I, I think it's it's hard for him to come back from here. That command they can just push forward. And yeah. Also, I was I was gonna say so that game. On, it was a game in Iceland where Orphelia's built nothing but dirt bags, if I recall correctly. Nothing but dirt bags. It was dozens upon dozens of dirt bags. And I mean, okay, later on I think they switched to air or something. But they were for at least five minutes nothing but dirt bags. And so, I'm su not surprised, they were obviously practicing. I thought it was a troll strategy against a new player, kind of sandbagging. But I guess they were actually practicing it for tournament play. Like, as a no. G strategy they had on hand. Like, just use all the dirt bags. That being said though, Lowry is actually managing to catch up, and Orphelius is falling. They're hitting that hump, they're hitting the plus 20 hump. Lowry is not. Lowry's using their factory as best they can, so despite Orphelius having been an economic advantage for a little while, they aren't... it's not reflected in their production whatsoever. And it looks like it won't ever be. Or Orphelius is not building any workers. Pure Bandit, some He doesn't need himself. more workers. He has two, and that's all he needs at this point. Yeah, but none of them are being used to actually improve the production of the factory. Yeah, he could use someone as factory, but he has his commander, uh, Over and those in the corners corner to spend the his metal. <laughs> There's a one roach here that might become a money roach. <laughs> oh, it could. It's, well, actually, that wasn't bad. It got rid of half the glaives, but it also got rid of the convict. Like I said, friendly fire. Not friendly. Oh, there's the... <laughs> I really didn't understand the discussion on the tick. A steam achievement for dirtbagging. I, <laughs> yeah. I could oh. see that causing all the perverse incentives in the world. Let's not. Let's not say we... Well, let's not even say we did. Let's just not. And over the north, we do see that Orphelius does have to deal with a bit of this. Nah, not really much. The northeast hasn't got much interesting going on. Lowry has set up defenses, but Orphelius is slowly but surely getting through them. And up come outlaws and thugs. This is where I really would wish there was a caretaker up here. I mean, Lowry actually... They've kind of lost a lot He's of the economy. He's uh, doing the factory switch. Yeah, going for gunship tips. plant. They have where that's basically stalled out because of low priority and just build the gunships. Probably either Brawler or Brawler would make sense. But they might go for Mass Ban no, not Mass Banshee. I couldn't see Black Dawn. Brawler is the only one that really makes sense from this position. And the I think the investment game. in this factory is too big, he cannot afford it. Yeah, but at the same time, what else would they do? I mean I guess they could build up a bunch of warriors, that would be a good idea. But I think Lowry is just deciding, you know, go for the desperation strategy, because at this point, Lowry can. I mean, they're one game up. 
If they lose, well, it's game three. No big deal. If they win, they go on to the finals. Great. So at this point, they might as well go for the desperation strategy and... If it works, it works. If it doesn't, then they have another game. If it's a real desperation strategy, he could reclaim that factory. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's, it's, a, couple it's of those, a, a couple of those conjurers could be on reclaim. That would actually help things out. Maybe not just at the factory. Maybe just even a solar collector or something. Something a bit cheaper, but no, actually the factory would be more worth it. Still, gunship switch. Yeah, has but now we can see the warriors in action. Great. I've been waiting to. Uh for them to do something. And here they come. The bandits are not doing much against they them. Just, they are those bandits apart. Wow. And I think he can... I, I hope he can take on those uh, outlaws. I'm starting to think of bandits. Yeah, he he also has a tick uh, close. This army with good micro, good positioning, he can win this battle. The glaze in the back and the uh, tick in the back and those two warriors is enough to win this fight. Mm -hmm. But he... Because Orphelis is just playing silly with all those terrors in the top right. It's a complete waste of metal. Okay, what that? Yeah, you're right. Defender nest like that is just why, especially since bandits do not beat warriors apparently the same way glaives do. I guess by speed, because like that many glaives would have killed two warriors, like a dozen. At this glaives? point, this is just yeah. <laughs> a dirtbag and one one defender. Good question. Defender has 300 HP and 105 damage per shot, but it has a massive reload time. Now, if he runs in that tick, he uh, can kill that entire group in the lower left. <laughs> Uh, let's see, that tick Remember is... the tick, remember the tick. It's still there. Run let's it in. Find it, there it is, found it. And it's not being done. Orphelius is not advancing carelessly. That's good to see. Now anyway, uh, as I was Lori had saying, a dirt bag. very good opportunity there. Because the dirt bag has I max... think he, he forgot about it. Oh. He must have forgot about it. Must or have. he... You know, now that Brawler is done. Okay, so... Uh, uh, oh, he can kill the commander now. And then there's no commander, no... Uh, no defender uh, nest. But yeah, no, I, I mean, there's no constructor left on the top right corner. Oh, honestly, oh that's a lot of defenders. <laughs> does it matter? I mean, Orphelius is going straight yes, in the defender nest. I think nest. those defenders can get the uh, brawler. Wow, that investment actually paid off. Well, almost. There'll be another brawler before oh, that's paid off. It. Two or three more brawlers, and then it'll pay off. <laughs> no, there's no money for two or three more brawlers. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That was a desperation strategy that kind of failed. However, I was about to say... Yeah, so but it wasn't necessary. He could have just leave I it know. there. It's, it was just silly. It worked. He could win that, bo that bottom left fight with the brawler even better. And then f uh, fight that commander closer to his base. Get the reclaim from the lower left. He has the constructors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with... Between Defender and Dirtbag, it looks like Dirtbag can actually win a Defender one-on-one. -on -one, because the Defender will take... It'll take about a grand total of 15 seconds to kill. Oh, and now he's the... High the enough. Just barely high enough the Defender... Sh the Dirtbag should be able to get the 300 damage in, in the time it takes for the Defender to get two salvos off. I was just answering a question in chat. Sorry, that was a <laughs> random thing. But Orphelius has this game pretty much in the bag. Lowry taking the southwest corner... But even yeah, with that's, that, this is what he should have done five minutes ago. Yeah, and that tick went off, but didn't go off in that much. Got a but handful of five thugs minutes ago. Us. There was one third of that army, and no sharpshooter. This is the one unit I was mentioning before that can fire without decloaking. Pretty much the one unit that can do so. Can't think of any other unit offhand that actually has that property. Yeah, nothing else comes to mind. So yeah, this thing, this thing is a very valuable asset. Now, if there was a felon for Orphelius, that would be much more valuable. Being Thug Outlaw is handy. Useful for getting rid of a Thug here and there, but the distribution of units is such... It's so widely distributed, the value of these units, that it's hard to really choose what to kill. They're all useful, but you have to kill only one every 12 seconds. Or, sorry, 10 seconds. No, 15 seconds! Wow, I was off the first time. And at the same time, Orphelius... They're creeping with the defenders, for whatever reason. For whatever unholy reason, they have decided to go for, I don't even know how many defenders anymore, at least four dozen, well, almost four dozen defenders. Actually, the only one with defenders, yeah. So, 44 41, defenders yeah. for Orphelius. I don't even, but it doesn't matter because that's not what's winning the game. What's winning the game is the shield push, and Orphelius gets game three. Or very soon we'll get game three, assuming they don't mess anything up. And it looks like they're playing relatively safe, so they probably won't. And they have another ball as well, of dirt bags. Because of course they would. Remember this, people. Orphelius loves their dirtbags. A lot. 
And also have a roach, because good measure. Why not? Although it's for defense. No, it's moving forward as well. The roach is moving forward. I don't know where it will be used. Maybe to get rid of this lotus. I'll blow up a few of its own dirt bags. That failed spectacularly. I think Rephelius is being a bit too safe, though. I don't know what your take on it is, but these two Stardusts weren't here a minute ago. Hmm. And the dirtbag's going to the southwest. I can kind of see uh, that. Lowry can uh, GG now. Yeah, I, I don't know uh, why Lowry's staying in here. I mean, tournament game, so tenacity is definitely rewarded. But in this case, there's not really much of a way out. Orphelius does have the economy advantage. Lowry does have the reclaim, which is nice, but Orphelius has the economy. Really does have the economy. Another brawler being built up, though, just in case. Despite the fact that this defender nest has become abs beyond absurd. Brawlers are still being built. Slowly but surely. 15 seconds before that gets up. And there we go. There's the GG. We're on to game three. Orphelius takes a game off Lowry. And then Lowry gets to choose the map for the last one. And whoever wins goes on to the finals against the winner of Clone and Shadow. Or Silent Shadow. It is... Let's see. Where's Silent Shadow? Yeah. Clone and Silent Shadow will be afterwards. That's what we'll be casting after this game three. An exciting, strangely satisfying. Orphelius, this was strangely satisfying. Yes, it's called winning. It's a great feeling, I know. Especially against someone like Lowry. That was, I mean, that worked. That was well done. It was a little bit silly at points. Not gonna lie, some of Orphelius' play was just downright bizarre. Even no, it wasn't. It wasn't good. It was Lori that didn't recognize what was happening. Yeah, that <laughs> failed to uh, punish the silly moves of uh, Orphelius. Yeah, because yeah, at that point, I mean, those defenders could have been ignored safely, and it would have just yep. been going around the other side. And Lowry was kind of starting to do that, but yeah, the brawler, I guess, just didn't really know. Was I don't think it was radar even. I don't think Lowry had radar. Come to think of it. Or if they did, it didn't last very long. It wasn't there. I should have checked that. That was something I normally check. Yeah, Lowry definitely did not know where to go. So Lowry's going to take a small break. I'm actually going to get some water. So I don't know if you want to just entertain the stream or what. But yeah, I'll be back in just a minute. Yeah, we will be back in a couple minutes. When Lowry is also back. Okay. So, short break, everyone. I'll I guess. Intermission music. Oh, yeah. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Sorry about the slow delay. Let's turn the music down. All right. Looks like Laurie's back, so we can start. Perfect timing. All right. Wonderful. We are going to be on Red Comets, I believe. Or... Again. Yeah, well, uh, like I said, we're going to... I mentioned earlier, we are going to see Red Comet at least once. More like at least once per set. I'm actually starting to get, it's starting to warm up on me, I gotta be honest, at least after having worked on it for a while. It is starting to work, warm up to me, although one thing I should point out, and one thing we actually fixed in the, in what will be the updated version, the diffuse texture has compression artifacts, like JPEG style compression artifacts. You can't tell normally because the way the engine works, it automatically applies a bit of a noise detail texture to make it, it just makes it look... Like, there's more going on in general. I mean, detail textures are a common thing in games. It's a great thing to have. The engine applies in one by default, but there isn't one that's provided by the actual map maker. And in the case of Red Gom, it, it very nicely hides the weird compression artifacts that exist in the diffuse map. Don't know why they do, because the diffuse map is usually either BMP or PNG, neither of which are compressed lossily. Or compressed at all in case of BMP. But yeah, also, welcome to uh, map designers. Uh, <laughs> welcome <channel>. to the uh, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the map design radio free map designer. I am your host, Shadow Free Sixty Three, and with me, a special guest, Floris the Fourteenth, who has made some uh, maps. Logan, <laughs> who has made a map. Yeah, I made a map. <laughs> now, tell the audience which map you have made. I think it was Wanderlust, right? Wanderlust, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, no, I did a couple more, but they uh, didn't really stick with. Mm. Anyway, uh, we've got uh, Lori. Does he, he do, uh, does hover? He does do. Yeah. Hmm. Lori doing the hovercraft factory. 
Sorry, you were saying? Uh, Orphelius is uh, thinking out loud about <laughs> to, whether to take um, hovercrafts or not. Yeah, daggers in next... All There's so many things that are in next table. I don't know what's the delay on next table, actually. There's a lot of things, both interface-wise and unit-wise. So yeah, right now, daggers and mace are actually a bit more powerful than they should be. Because daggers, we're playing yeah. on stable, which there's a lot of changes that will be made in the next table. One of which is a nerf to daggers and maces. So we'll see hover versus hover. But still, I think you can uh, have a good match with slashers. Yeah, you can. But I don't know how many players going for light vehicles think to go for slashers. I think most people are going to go for scorchers or maybe levelers. Not that levelers are bad. But yeah, slashers do have that position tool to them. Visual bug. Oh, is this one of the metal spots? Yeah, this is one of the errant metal spots. And another errant metal spot. Yeah. Yes, Orphelius. We, oh, we, Orphelius can't hear me. All right, mm. Orphelius over to the northwest. This is an unusual start with light vehicles. Orphelius going for cheese. Yeah, I think he's going to make five scorches and win the game. Because, okay, here's the yes, thing. Yes, exactly what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, that's all that can be done. Because, I mean, Lowry is always going to go... Like, typically, a player will either go for northeast, southwest, or the center. East, west, well, center. I hope Lowry um, knows Orphelius well enough to know that's a cheesy uh, bastard. <laughs> yeah, because going to the northwest and southeast, the only reason you do that is for what Orphelius is doing right now, which is to minimize the rush distance in order to allow you... To basically get in. The problem with northeast, or, yeah, northwest and southeast is that you cannot really defend anything. Because of this giant crater, there's no easy way to go from here and defend the rest of the metal extractors. Not without going forward first, which is extremely risky. Because once again, uh, you've four, already reduced uh, the rush Four distance. of his scorches are done. He's, he's going in, going now with four. Fifth yeah. one, he's not making. He, he cancelled it. He does have a metal extractor though, surprisingly enough. <laughs> If uh, Lori defends this, he wins. Yeah, goes on to finals. But if not, his, Orphelius does. He doesn't have a raider Ooh. yet. His load yeah. is wow, in the back. He has queued up a constructor. Or, uh, everything Lowry, is not going his way. Lowry did not so now call he needs this to retreat into his lotus range. I mean, daggers are out of position. Oh, why Lowry is expected that a southwest was... start. Yeah, oh, the, the scorches cannot be too close. Okay, one of them still alive. Saving grace for Orphelius right now. Ah. Oh, it's gonna die. The solar collector explosion will kill this one scorcher. Oh, won't quite. Wow. But solars are not the target. The factory's the. Oh, but the lotus is too close. I cannot get to the. Yeah, the solar's gonna die. I mean, the scorcher might as well kill the solars because that's all it can really do with four health left. Not a bad kill. Orphelius definitely can be ahead. They should be. Re they're rebuilding the scorchers. Get a few more of but those. But he doesn't have any energy left. He has a 0 0.3 energy income. And the dagger's gonna come around the back. And no, he, heal it's, it's over. He, he doesn't have any income. He cannot make any more. Um, Lowry can't. Solar no. collectors, not for at least uh, five minutes. <laughs> yeah, Lowry. It's if Ophelius can defend this, then uh, it is going to be. Even if he would only have his commander, he would still be, he would still win. Yeah, the commander's over here, though. Ophelius is way out of position. That's the problem. He could lose his factory. He could, could lose everything. The commander can take on the score, uh, the daggers. And the factory's going down, though. That's the problem. The factory will die. This commander can't save it. So it was way too out of position at the time. Although I'm not sure who's actually surrendering outright. He can. I don't think he realizes he uh, can win this. Oh no! no he does. Orphelius is the one who surrendered. Oh no! Wait, what? No, Lowry did surrender. Orphelius of course, took he it. couldn't do anything. Oh yeah, I guess that's, he didn't that's have any true. energy. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I guess this, once the factory died, all the daggers would have been dead anyway. So that's, yeah, there's no way to rebuild that. Well, okay, that was quick. Definitely virtue. It's like, Orphelius' cheese worked. Well done, Orphelius. The cheese succeeded. It's been a very cheesy tournament. Between Auto War and Orphelius, it's just been cheese all the time. It's refreshing. It's a change. It's almost like Cubay is playing, even though Cubay hasn't been seen in a while. But you no, know, Cubay plays in spirit through, through Orphelius and Auto War. If 
Unless Cube renamed themselves and we never knew. Yeah, that's what. what... <laughs> so Orphelius has been a Cube Smurf this entire time! <laughs> he moved to Poland, yeah. <laughs> yeah, went from Britain to Poland. Because why not? Anyway, that's Orphelius. So congratulations into the finals. Lowry into the bronze match. Very surprising. That's a total upset. Honestly expected Lowry would win that. Now, for Clone and Silent Shadow, that is the next match we'll be having. Yeah, that's. I think let's uh, talk about the game for a second. Um, <laughs> yeah, that last one was part of the map view. Lowry didn't build darts at the start. He didn't scout. Lowry was playing hover. He was waiting until he had three scorches. No, uh, three daggers. Uh, to move out, he didn't scout uh, with his first dagger. He waited a long time. Well, I think like, Lowry didn't expect cheese. That was the thing. Lowry expected Ophelia to he play should, straight. He should, you should always expect either uh, yeah. gunships and uh, gun game three. something like this. Game three, expecting... Because like, Red Comet cheese, it's that rush distance shortening. It's being in the northwest and southeast where you just have like, only cross... You don't have to go diagonal across the map. You just have to go the horizontal distance. And that's all you have to deal with. Because, I mean, Lowry, if they started in the center, would have been a bit safer. And center, I think, is a safer position overall. It's just easier to defend those northeast mexes. You can take them fairly easily while still taking the center mexes. Whereas at the northeast, you have to then go south and expand south and extend yourself and try to build defenses there instead of having your factory in front of it. And that would also have been less... That would have been more resilient to cheese because it would have been just further away. The entire idea of reducing the rush distance is based on the meta of starting your factory in the northeast corner or southwest corner rather than starting in the center. But yeah, Lowry didn't even check until it was way too late. So that was... that really just killed it. Yeah, now viewers know why we get starting boxes. Scuzzy is right, because there are a lot of choices you can make about where you start that make a huge difference to how the game plays out. By the way, I'm a big proponent for uh, fixed start locations, like uh, Spring used to have. Yeah, I I can see that, and I was really surprised by boxes myself. I'm not sure what to make of them, like whether they are worth having, like whether the issues with interface and when it comes to generally how you set up your maps is worth the flexibility that you get for opening strategy like this. It's good to have a kind of limit the options in the early game and let the options you have grow as the time progresses instead of having one million things to consider in from the first second on. Yeah. It becomes a lot more uh, random. Well, that's but this is true for any strategy game, by the way, not just a rogue game. Yeah, that's something that is worth pointing out. Like the op you're opening, you're opening before scouting options that you can't. They're mutually exclusive. Do have to be carefully considered. And considering the fact that the maps I like the most are the ones that have the most fixed starting locations, I kind of see what you mean. Except for Geyser. Geyser is kind of meh. Still, I mean... Whether or not it's worth having from a design perspective, Orphilius took full advantage of it. 